What's going on guys? Kevin Fox from Fox Fishing 4K. So I am going to start a little mini series where I answer all of your guys' questions. I get questions every single day. I get tons of them and I feel really bad if I can't get to you guys in time or I can't kind of write out a detailed answer for you. Instead of writing back to every single person, I'm just gonna make videos and then I can send the link to all of you guys whenever you ask this question. That's what this is gonna be. Let's just jump right into it. Let's bring on the question, let's go. question you guys are always asking me in relation to salmon is what kind of downrigger ball should I get okay so this is gonna have a couple variables to it it's gonna one depend on which downrigger you have if you have something like the Termin Pro Pack Scotties they can handle a lot of weight they got a lot of strength to them you can handle up to something like a 20 pound cannonball do you need that no is it awesome? Yes. But if you're just starting out, you're just getting into downrigger, downriggers and cannonballs, I, I wouldn't suggest that for you. Yes, it's gonna have less blowback, but it's gonna be a lot of weight. Start off with something 12 pounds, 15, 16 pounds, you're golden. Um, this way too, if you have your downrigger, check what the rating is on your downrigger and what weights they can pull or if it's a manual crank. So what I get asked all the time is style of cannonballs. So you've got some that are round, some that are flat like pancakes. They're like a round disc like this with a fin on the back. Some are like I brought here, <laughs> shaped like torpedoes, a torpedo cannonball. I've ran this a lot. I mean, this is one of my old faithfuls. I used to run this a lot. Ugh. Switch from that. <laughs> And then I started running these. A lot of people recognize these. This is the shark cannonballs. Ran a lot of these. And finally now, I am running these. And these are Titans. They're put out by POW Casting, Canadian company. I like to support Canada. And they run great. So, What's the difference between all three of those? What's the difference between something that's shaped like a fish or a ball or a pancake? All comes down to tracking and drag, okay? So, aerodynamics. Just like going through wind with water, you get resistance. So if you got a big round ball like this and you're plowing through the water, you got a lot of resistance hitting the front of that ball. What is good about those round balls is if you want to go to the bottom and drag in the sand and uh, drag for lake trout you can they're not going to be an odd shape where they're going to lay sideways or get snagged up in rocks as easy as some of these other cannonballs but 99% of people fishing are not dragging bottom for lake trout they might troll five feet off bottom so really there's no purpose to having a round cannonball at all, ever. <laughs> I'd say they shouldn't even make them anymore. If you can think of a reason to run a round cannonball, please let me know in the comments. Um, but I can't think of any. Next are the fish shape. The fish shape are good. And what I like about the fish shape is they track well. Uh, other fish see them. They see them swimming. Sometimes it attracts fish. I have salmon, I have musky, I have pike, all kinds of different species of fish when I'm down ringing, come up and look at that cannonball. Especially the chrome ones. The chrome ones will really attract fish, but sometimes almost too much. Uh, I want the fish to go to my spoon. I want them to go to my flash or fly. I don't want them hanging around my cannonball too, too much. I don't want to dread or get so much attention to the cannonball that it's detracting from my baits and the chrome do that we did a whole bunch of tests where we'd run one shark on one side that was chrome black on the other side and we'd get I don't know like four fish on the dark two fish on the chrome and then sometimes one rigger will always fire better so we ended up switching them same depths same everything and the bites would do a, a little bit better on the black cannonballs we did this several days months over a year if you watch my first video about documentation we documented everything um 
and a black cannonball has always produced better than chrome for us overall. So if you're gonna get a cannonball, get black. Now, Titan does put out some glow ones. Uh, there's also some other brands. I, I, I believe that they are painting them, like looking like Wonder Bread colors and things like that. They look really cool. I love the glow. I love all that kind of stuff. I can, I've never tried them myself, and I don't know if they detract from the baits like the chrome does, or if, if they're good and attract fish from a long ways away. I don't know. If you have experience with them, again, comment down below. Let me know, because uh, I really want to try some of those glow-in-the-dark cannibals. Maybe it's just something that it, uh, it catches fishermen and not fish. I don't know, but I want them and I want to try them. But getting back to the cannonballs, some things that I used to do on these older ones is I would have a dedicated left cannonball and a dedicated right cannonball. So I would have it like this, and you see that fin? You'd probably see a curve in that. And what I would do is I would bend this one direction. So if I bent it this way, this would be a cannonball I put on the right side of my boat. Because as the boats, let's say, head in this direction, I got this cannonball, and I've got that curve this way like this, it's gonna pull that cannonball out away from my boat. And we used to do that just to get the cannonballs to pull a little bit further out to each side, bending the fins. We stopped doing that. You really don't need it. It was something we did back in the day, messing around with our stuff. These things track so straight now, especially the new Titans. You don't need to bend fins. And what happens more times than not, I have a new person in my boat. They put the cannonball from the right side of the boat on the left side of the boat, and it's tracking towards underneath it. And it's just a mess, especially if we have to do real sharp corners and turns like that, and both cannonballs are tracking out. They go kind of go a little bit wonky. So if you're looking at a cannonball, starting off, I would start off with a POW casting Titan, and I would get it in around 12 pounds if you're just starting out. You see how there's a hole in the back of this thing? Don't hook your clip to that, okay? Don't hook your clip to your cannonballs. What I see a lot of people do, is they hook their line, their, their downrigger cable to this, it goes up, then they put their clip on here, and this goes back to like a Scotty clip back here, and they clip their line on it. Then they crank down their rod and load it up so you get the rod to buckle over like you should be doing. But what happens is underwater, as you put tension on this, you know how things are lighter underwater, you start cranking up your tail like this. So once you get it loaded up, your cannonball is actually swimming like this through the water. And it's not meant to swim like that. It's meant to swim like this. So yes, there's a hole here. Don't attach your clip for your downrigger, for your rod to that. If you're gonna clip anything to this, this hole, use something like an agitator where it comes back and it spins like an attractor and then run short leads and just put your clip a couple feet above the ball and then just run your spoon or your flash or fly like eight, 10 feet back from that, really close to the cannonball. Have your clip up above here. Also, if we're talking about downrigger balls, get yourself a snubber. I should have brought one in. What a snubber is, it's a rubber, it's a little bit of a stretchy rubber cable that clips to the cannonball that attaches to your um, downrigger cable. It's really nice to grab onto. You can lift your cannonball with it. It gives a little bit of stretch and bounce to it. So when you drop this cannonball down, you pull the lever on a Scotty or you push the down button on a Canon or whatever brand you have. As it's going down, this thing's sinking. Down it goes. When it stops, it goes bang. It stops, it's a lot of weight. And that, that snubber will take up some of that shock so it's not yanking so hard on the top of your downrigger ball and cable. It'll stretch a little bit. Not only that, if you ever hook the bottom, it's gonna stretch a little bit. It just gives you a little bit of forgiveness on your cable. A lot of people are running the Scotty Offshore clips. Do I recommend those? Not one bit. If I was getting a clip, I would get a Chamberlain. And the reason is, they're like an inline clip. You can set the tension on your rod and you can set the tension on the release. So I'll, I'll do another video specifically about those, but that's the release I would do just because I can set 
the pounds pressure for loading my rod so I can load it to like six pounds but I can still have it like a hairline trigger so a herring bites it a tiny little laker a little rainbow bites it that rods gonna pop not only that when you start loading your rod with the offshore clips you're always bending your rod right down you're always like one more turn one more turn because you don't want it to pop you're like okay there's perfect sometimes you go one too many it pops you're like oh gotta reset everything or you buried it too far into the clip and you're trying to pop it out and you're yanking 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 and you can't get it to pop out so or a fish is bouncing and it's not pulling it out so don't run the offshore clips spend the money and get some chamberlains so another thing test your cannonball when you bring it up to waterline you want to make sure that it stops it sits there uh, check your clutch though that if you can pull this ball down a little bit if you tug it really hard that it actually pulls some drag out of your downrigger if it's so tight you can't pull that if you ever hook bottom what's gonna end up happening it's just gonna snap this off or it's gonna rip your whole downrigger off the back of the boat so uh, in the top of uh, the Scotties you can check the nuts set your tension it's, it's like a drag for your fishing rod set that properly you want to make sure that your cannonball comes up to the water it's not it's not just spinning but you want to be able to give it a tug and it pulls out some drag so hopefully that information helps you guys out that's a little bit on cannonballs i'll do another video specifically on clips because i think that's going to take a little bit more time and i'll bring a clip in and show you guys but my recommendation is in short you want to get out what size downrigger ball 12 to 16 pounds Grab yourself a POW Casting Titan in black, get yourself a snubber, and definitely don't hook anything to the back of here unless it's an agitator. So if you're starting out, don't even put an agitator, just running this up. Even if you're using your offshore clips, click it, clip them to the top of your uh, snubber. All right, guys, so that's my recommendation, and on to the next question. See you guys later. Bye-bye.